Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Midweek Manna. As always, we are glad to have you join us. Uh, for those of you that were expecting a Midweek Manna last week, I just did not get a chance to film one. And I deeply apologize, but I truly, truly appreciate each and every one that had said something about, hey, I was waiting on Midweek Manna and I didn't get no manna this week. So uh, I apologize. But every now and then, uh, if it's a, a, a filming opportunity or sometimes you just need a break, um, we we have to go through those uh, moments. And uh, But we certainly appreciate you all reaching out and all glory to God. He's the one who gives me the, the breath and the strength and the ideas and the knowledge to even put on these midweek manners. And I am just so grateful, so honored, so humbled to be used by him and honored to, uh, to be able to come to you by way of YouTube trying to film these uh, midweek manners just to give you a little bit of encouraging word. And um, let me tell you, that word doesn't just go for you. Listen, my brothers and sisters, that word comes right back and it encourages me. It encourages me even while I sit here thinking about it and um, diving into the word of God to, to help me get through life, which in turn help all of us get through life purely by the word of God. This is it. So today we want to jump into uh, St. John chapter 4, and uh, this fell in my spirit about uh, being empty, empty again. And I want to encourage you all because uh, like many of, 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 of us that go throughout this, this day and go throughout the years and the months, sometimes we feel like we are empty. We feel like we have dropped our, our buckets and lowered our buckets into the well of life, ready to pull out a, a big, refreshing pail of water and sometimes it just comes up with nothing or it just comes up with so little water that you need a straw to get down and, and get it out with. So so Jesus in John chapter four comes into uh, an encounter with a woman who is at the well. Now this, this isn't just a particular woman. It is a woman who is from Samaria. And so, as you know, uh, some of you may or may not know, um, the, the historical opportunities between the Jews and Samaritans was quite rocky. See, because Jews didn't do Samaritans and Samaritans didn't do Jews. And, and the reason why is because the Samaritans were Jewish people, but they were outcasts. They were folks that had uh, left the Jewish faith and then they intermarried with um, uh, people who served a lot of idols and, and they had all these different kinds of things going on, whether it was religious, uh, issues or, uh, idolatry, idolatry, uh, worship, idol worshiping, trying to get it out, blah, blah, blah. And all those kinds of things. Well, the long story short, they didn't keep the customs and value, uh, of the law as, as traditional Jews did. So they were outcasts. But in John chapter four, Jesus is cutting through Samaria. You know, he's, he's, he and the disciples are, are cutting through and he sends the disciples away to get something to eat. And then he goes to this well, this particular well where folks come, they lower their buckets, they lower their pails in to draw up water so that they could take care of their livestock and perhaps uh, to give them some vital sustenance, you know, by boiling the water and then uh, hopefully it becoming uh, uh, potable or potable, tomato, tomato, if you choose, uh, for them to drink and to use and to cook with. So Jesus is standing at this well and this woman comes up to draw and, and, and he tells her that um, uh, I need some water to drink and, and draw me up some water. And she's baffled because she's a Samaritan. Jesus is obviously a Jew. And she tells Jesus, you know, I'm surprised that you even talking to me because Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And I came here because our father gave us this well and we are going to just use this well until the time comes for us to get all the water out of it if possible. And uh, it's the social gathering. It's a place where we can feed our livestock on and on and on as if Jesus didn't know that. So Jesus says, you know, you're going to continue to draw on that well, but I can give you some water where you will never thirst again. And amazingly, this woman is, is just blown away because she really thinks that Jesus is talking about a different type of well. And she says, you know, sir, show me this well. Show me this, this place where I can get this water, uh, where I will, will never thirst again. And lo and behold, she finds out that Jesus is talking about himself. And so Jesus challenges her. He says, you know, go ahead and tell your husband um, about, about this encounter that you and I had today. And she says, you know, sir, I, I don't have a husband. And Jesus corrects her and he says, you're right. 
because you've had five husbands. One, two, three, four, five husbands. And the one, the man that you're living with, the man that you shacked up with, he's not even your husband. And she was blown away because Jesus told her all those things that no one could have known other than herself. So my point is, she kept putting that pail in that well all the way up until the time that she had an encounter with Jesus and she was drawing water out of that well. And sometimes when the well dries up, your pail comes up empty. So my point is, um, for all of us that go through life, for whatever hangups we have, whether whether you've been disappointed, whether you've been deflated, whether you've been uh, def deflated, whatever it is, Jesus is the well. He, he is the well that will never run dry. And, and look at the encounter that he had with this Samaritan woman because of the history between the Jews and the Samaritans. He wedged his way into this encounter, into this setting with this woman. And he talks about the well, the well of life being himself. And my brothers and sisters, if we keep getting disappointed by people or problems or situations or circumstances, getting let down uh, in our homes or let down in our jobs, it is time that you put your bucket in a well that will never run out, in a well named Jesus who, who tells us in Psalm 23 that he can bless us so much that our cup runs over. Just like I have in this uh, video, I have ran over my five minute time limit. Um, but I just want you to know that if you continue investing in a well that is dry, you will always, always come up empty. But if you get into the unmatched, the, the, the true, sincere word of God and you let Jesus drive your life, you let Jesus remain at the wheel of your life. You will never be empty. God bless you. Thank you so much. Um, you know, we're seven minutes, but I guess I didn't do a film last week. So <laughs> just figure that you got a BOGO <laughs> by one and you got one. God bless you. Take care. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this week's Midweek Manor. Thank you.